Uh, Joe Cerrone, welcome to KID 117 in our weekly Zoom classroom meeting. This week we're covering Module 5. Module 5 goes through creating dimension styles for mechanical drawings. We have two mechanical drawings that you're to complete both of them. The first one is an ordinal dimension type drawing. If we take a look at this one, by the section, the second one, uh, but it's it's this block that will create the dimensions of the machine block and the geometry for that. There's a better detailed one in the Lab 5 component. And then 5A is this ordinal drawing of the, of the uh, mechanical drawing. And so you're going to complete both of those. Use the B-size mechanical title block to do that. And the drawings will look like this when you're done. And so we'll have this mechanical drawing right here. And as you uh, create these mechanical drawings, what you want to be able to do here is to set the UCS icon at the zero position right over here. And so the key to working with ordinal dimensions is if we set the UCS and then we set the origin, I'm just going to type in origin, it doesn't seem to be coming up there. And at this point right here, and I'm going to use an O snap. And so when we put in the dimensions for that, And I'll just put them on this red layer right here. What we would use is the ordinal dimensioning command right here. And then our first dimension, let's turn on our O snap. First dimension will give us a zero. And this graphic card is a little wonky here. If I have it out of conceptual, it'll be easier to read. And then as we go through, we'll tag the endpoints of the other ordinal dimensions. And so we would go and get this center point location. Typically, I'll do the vertical or horizontal dimensions first. And these are very good for CNC machining. And so <clears throat> the reason they're good for machinists is because machinists will typically work off a of part zero. And then if they're going to drill a hole or something like that, they can get the exact hole coordinate at an X coordinate of 4.375 and then a Y coordinate at 3.375. And so it works very well for a CNC type machining. And then create the model of the part. You can just extrude it, uh, give it a thickness of a quarter of an inch or something like that. And then set up the viewport and lock in the scale at a measurable dimension. So that's the first lab, and then the second lab is this part. And like I said, the, the one on the splash page was missing a little bit of the information. It was missing the hatch lines because this is what would be known as a sectional view. And so this part is cut in half. It should actually have a section line through the center of it right here. And that would show how the part's interior features would be displayed. And so we have this slot. And then we have a countersunk hole. And then we have a counterboard hole. And then we have just a normal hole with a, a counter bore as well. And that information is given right here. You're going to put that information in with a multiliter. Put the dimensions in from a baseline dimensioning technique. And they're staggered. And the chapter goes through. and explains to you working with mechanical dimension drawings and styles. <laughs> so as we take a look at this chapter, what we're looking at <clears throat> being able 
to define size and location dimensions. <clears throat> Look at the terminology for our dimensions, things like uh, dimension line, extension line. Looking at the standards for mechanical dimensions, everything from text heights to, to um, dimension line locations, and then basic skills for dimensioning, do's and don'ts, and then being able to go through and work with these different dimensioning techniques. And so as we look, they like to put in these sketches of isometric drawings, learn how to dimension in 3D as well. AutoCAD's a great tool for that. But essentially, we're dimensioning for manufacturing. So as we go through, we're looking at what dimensions we would need to be able to describe the part. How would we be able to create this part? We would need the sizes and the locations for these different features. And so the first PowerPoint basically goes through how you standardize these dimensions. Things like dimensioning cylindrical shapes, you'll use a diameter symbol, you will avoid crossing dimensions, in other words you'll dimension from the smallest to the largest. You will try to space the dimensions in an easy to read system. We had things like symmetry symbols. Here's our ordinal dimensioning. They made a whole table. And here's our information for our counter bore versus a counter sink. And then the, the counter sink. As you start getting better with mechanical design, you'll want to get some knowledge of drills and drill geometry in some of the more higher end programs like SOLIDWORKS and um, Inventor will have whole um, wizards that will actually create the whole geometry exactly as the tooling is created. And so you'll notice this one has the counter, the, um, the section line that goes through the part. Do's and don'ts, and then the standards for that. And so there's, there's three of these PowerPoints. Do yourself a favor and look them over because this is the information that tells you why you're dimensioning and how you're dimensioning what you're dimensioning. And so as we go through, the second PowerPoint talks about tolerancing. Okay, nothing is perfectly to size. Okay, so this is a one inch cube, but it's plus or minus 10 thousandths, meaning 0 0.010. So it can be as big as 1.010 or 0 0.090 or 0 .9, um, 0.990. And so as we go through and we start working with the dimensions, <clears throat> if the parts are created with intolerance, they're acceptable and they'll be accepted by the manufacturer and by the vendor. But if they're out of tolerance, they'll send them back and then you eat the, the cost. And so being able to work with dimensions Intolerancing is an important component when you create drawings for manufacturing. So it goes through some of these different tolerancing techniques. And then in the third module or the third component, it goes through AutoCAD dimensioning techniques. And so what your CAD manager will typically do is he will create a dimension style for you. And so at the end of this PowerPoint, there's the instructions for creating a mechanical dimension style. And so you can open up your B-size title block and then modify the standard dimensioning style according to these ASME Y14.2 standards. So you can go and set them up. Here it is, ASME Y14.5, 2009. And then they'll just show you which areas need to be updated and tweaked so that you're dimensioning at a standard, 
for mechanical drawings. And you can save that dimension style and then you can use that to dimension these different parts. And we're just, there's, uh, there's plenty of components that we can dimension. You're welcome to do bonus work. Um, the more work you do, the better you get at it. But our standard drawings for this chapter are just the two drawings in the main splash page. We've got this one machine block drawing, and then we've got the other drawing of the ordinal plate. All right, back to the main splash page. That's the basic Zoom meeting for Module 5. Module 4 is due on the 26th, and Module 5 is due on the 2nd. If you have any questions, be sure to email, and Alan and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, that ends this Zoom meeting, and I'm going to stop the recording and open things up for questions.